Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in this video I'm going to be sharing my top 5 VS Code extensions for 2019. So I use these every day at work and they definitely enhance my workflow and they save me time. So they're not too major but they definitely enhance your whole VS Code experience. So I've pulled down a GitHub repo called mithril.js and we're going to be using this repo to demonstrate all of these five extensions. So let's begin here with an extension called Git Lens. So I do a search for Git Lens right here. It's one of the most popular extensions for VS Code and basically it's got 16.9 million downloads and it's going to be enhancing um, the Git features that are already built into VS Code. And the main thing I like about it is the very well integrated git blame annotations. So uh, for example, if I was to go back inside uh, this file here, so um, in request and then request.js for example, I can see straight away uh, who made the last change to this line of code and how long ago that was. We can see here this person made this change last six months ago and we can see the entire git commit message in a little pop-up window. So even better, if I was to click on the git hash or the commit hash, we can see that um, we have all these extra options and we can even open the commit on GitHub or Bitbucket depending on your, um, on your provider. So if I was to click on this, it opens up in the browser the entire commit on your uh, git provider. And of course, definitely very useful for team environments you can see exactly who did what, um, obviously for what reason, and all of that stuff. So uh, definitely useful in a team environment right there. Um, so yeah, um, the second one here is going to be called uh, bookmarks. So uh, do a search here for uh, bookmarks. And uh, basically, as the name implies, um, you're able to bookmark particular lines of code and then uh, keep track of them. So. Um, back inside the request.js file, um, let's go over this uh, over this line here and just press Control Alt K, and it's going to bookmark this line of code. So we can see here we get a little little icon in the left corner near the line numbers, and if I was to scroll down, we even see um, the blue bookmark inside the scroll bar, and you can make multiple bookmarks on a single file, just like that. And of course, we now get two blue lines in the scroll bar. So definitely useful for keeping track of particular lines of code. And even better, we have here in the sidebar, we can see uh, what files were bookmarked and even um, the individual bookmarks themselves. So I can even jump to them from an unopened uh, file. I can jump to each particular bookmark. So definitely useful for doing things like bug fixes, you can keep track of different uh, lines of code across different files. Okay, so that is the bookmarks extension. The third one here is called to do highlight. Uh, and once again, the name implies that this one is going to be highlighting your to do's and your fix me's. So uh, it's quite straightforward. Let's go back inside the request file and essentially just say on the top here, make a comment and say to do refactor this. So pretty straightforward. We get a nice yellow bright background against it to do. And once again, um, it appears also in the scroll bar, just like the, um, the bookmark. So um, yeah, straightforward, easy to use and uh, definitely, definitely helps you out. Um, so the fourth one here is going to be called indented, indented block highlighter. Okay, so this one right here, it's a bit hard to find and it's only got 3.6 thousand downloads, which isn't too much, but it's definitely one of the most useful extensions I've ever used. So um, let's go back inside the request file and we can see here, I get this nice purple background against whichever block I'm inside. So we can see here the block begins at the bracket and of course closes down here somewhere. Uh, all the way down here, so the whole block gets highlighted um, that I'm inside. And of course, if I was to 
keep going more down and down, we can see the whole area of the block get smaller as I go down each individual block. So this one is definitely useful when you have large code bases with many indented if statements or indented functions and all that kind of thing. And it's even more helpful when you have uh, different indentation styles. So for example, I've got here uh, one, two, three, four, so uh, four spaces here, and then two down here, one, two, and of course the indented block highlighter extension is still going to know, um, uh, I'm pretty sure it's VS Code, but um, you know it's still going to know and highlight the, the actual block you're within. So uh, definitely useful right there, basically a must-have for very large code bases. Um, and also you can even customize, so for example, if I was to go inside the settings, I can customize it here um, with the block highlight.background property. I can pass in my RGBA. For example, if I want to make this um, a red background, I can say 255 red um, 00, 0, 0.5. Um, and now if I want to save this, we get a nice red background for the um, for the block highlight. So um, that is the indented block highlighting um, extension right there. And the fifth one is going to be called .env. So as the name implies, once again, um, do a search for .env and this one is going to be providing syntax highlighting or support for .env files. So let's go back inside here. I've made a file already for .env. We can see here it supports comments, it supports regular strings, it supports uh, quoted strings, it supports numbers, and it supports Boolean values, and I'm sure many more things. So, um, obviously, uh, VS Code doesn't uh, doesn't support .env files natively, so you need to install this extension to support the .env um, syntax highlighting. And that is my top five VS Code extensions for 2019. I'll leave a link to all of these in the description. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.